everybody. Uh, thanks for joining our talk. Uh, we're going to talk to you today about Gatsby and WordPress and the future of the new developments that we're working on in that space. So my name is Tyler Barnes. I'm a staff software engineer at Gatsby. I'm working mostly on the JS side of the new integration. Uh, you can find me on github.com slash Tyler Barnes or at Tyler Bar on Twitter. And I'm Jason Ball. I'm a staff software engineer at Gatsby. I'm the creator and maintainer of WP GraphQL, which is a free WordPress plugin that uh, turns any WordPress site into a GraphQL server. Uh, you can find me on GitHub at Jason Ball and on Twitter also at Jason Ball. Our goal is to make Gatsby the most powerful and maintainable way to build your decoupled WordPress front end. Let's take a look at why you might consider using WordPress and Gatsby together. First, they're both free and open source. This is a big deal if you care about owning your stack and contributing to make it better for the community. Next, Gatsby sites are blazing fast by default. I've been using WordPress for a long time. You can make WordPress very fast, but sometimes it's a full-time job to keep it fast. Gatsby sites are also secure because the output is static files, so there's nothing to hack. Next, WordPress is collaborative. This means you can have many people publishing content with no extra cost. The developer experience of React and Gatsby is amazing. We have access to tools like Graphical for working with GraphQL, React DevTools for working on the client, and more than 2,000 Gatsby plugins. When templating in WordPress with PHP, there's no concept of client-side state management. When templating in React and Gatsby, you can do dynamic stuff on the client with ease. Gatsby has a build step which allows us to put warnings and errors in front of you and prevent you from shipping bugs to production. And with Gatsby, we have access to the content mesh, which means we can pull content from many different systems into one cohesive website. You may have heard if you go decoupled with WordPress, you lose the ability to preview your content as you write it, and you lose the ability to publish content and have it live immediately because something like Gatsby would have to rebuild your site when things change. And you may have heard that you miss out on things like being able to hook into the WordPress plugin ecosystem from a decoupled front end. What if I told you you can have all the benefits that we talked about, including the ability to preview your content as you write it in WordPress, the ability to publish your content in WordPress and have it live on your Gatsby site, and the ability to hook into the WordPress plugin ecosystem from Gatsby. Today, we're announcing Gatsby Source WordPress v4 beta, which uses WP GraphQL on the WordPress server to communicate between two systems. We're gonna do a demo. I'm gonna have Tyler walk through features such as previewing content as you make changes in WordPress, publishing and have it be live on your Gatsby site, and being able to make use of WordPress plugin data from Gatsby. So yeah, so the first feature we're gonna demo is preview. Um, this is a feature that's been sorely missing in Gatsby source WordPress pretty much since the beginning. And in the new, the new version, the new integration, it's just a, a native feature of the plugin, which is great. So on the left side here, we have our WordPress instance. On the right, we have our preview window. Uh, this looks like a regular WordPress preview. You have this bar at the top, so your admins have the regular experience of preview that they're used to. But actually, in the bottom here, we have a Gatsby site. So on the left here, if I go ahead and update the title, maybe add some new content, uh, let's see, content update, I click preview. This will refresh on the right side of the preview window and you get your updated content right away. So as a content creator, I get to use the CMS that I'm already familiar with. Mm -hmm. As a developer, I get to use React and the Gatsby plugin ecosystem to build the front end. And uh, as an end user, I get to visit a very fast static site. So it's kind of like a win all around. I get to create the content the way I'm used to it. I get to develop with awesome new modern tools, take advantage of that whole ecosystem. And as a user, man, these sites are just so fast. So we just saw just like a content title update. What happens if we add an image in the content? Yeah, so that's another great new feature. Uh, if we, any images which get added to HTML automatically become Gatsby images. So if we go ahead and grab this cute puppy picture, put it into our post and click preview, we're gonna see that show up in our preview window and we're gonna have an actual Gatsby image. So um, wow. it's using the, the WordPress image sizes. So it's actually a bit sharper than WordPress, which is kind of cool. And that's because of Gatsby image. But if we come back to WordPress, we edit this image and instead of using a medium size, we use a full size and preview it again. We'll see that new size appear in our Gatsby site. 
And yeah, this is this is using Gatsby image. It's, it's generating image sizes for all the different screen sizes. It's lazy loading, all that great stuff. This is, this is pretty awesome. So let's say we're happy with the changes I made, the puppy picture and the content update changed to the title. Mm -hmm. We're happy with this. We want to publish it. Uh, what does that look like? Yeah, so we also are announcing incremental build support, which is pretty great. Um, so on the bottom left here, I have this. This is the latest build. So you can see that it has the old title. doesn't have our cute puppy picture. Um, the content is old. So if we go ahead, let's see. Let's go incremental builds and we click update. Uh, in the bottom left here, I will switch to my Gatsby dashboard. And you see that we have a new queued up incremental build. We've got the incremental flag on it here. It's going to start running. If we go into it, we can see what's happening. So we'll get all the logs. You can see that it's pulling updates since the last time it built. It's refreshing the source data, rebuilding the schema, all that great stuff that happens behind the scenes. And it built in 12 seconds. Uh, so if we, if we open our build preview here, we can see we have our new title, we have our content update. If we click into the actual post, we have our cute puppy picture. And the Gatsby image. What's cool too, over on the right side, since you updated the post, your preview maintained state and updated as well. It did, yeah. So we have the incremental builds title. Uh, so when you click publish, your previews maintained up to date. Your actual sites published up to date. So what, that was 13 seconds. Uh, I feel like at the last uh, WordPress agency I worked at, we had page caches of you know two minutes on pages. So this is faster mm -hmm. than uh, you know WordPress out of the box in some cases. So yeah, faster, uh, easier to scale, more maintainable. All yeah, this is things. this is pretty cool. Um, so I notice when you're editing content, it looks like you have Yoast SEO installed. Yes, so that's right. if I wanted to take advantage of like plugin data from Yoast, for example, a WordPress plugin, if I want to use that data in Gatsby, what what does that look like? Yeah, so that's one of the great things about the new integration. Um, Basically, how it works behind the scenes is we have the WP GraphQL schema, we have the Gatsby schema, and they get automatically merged together and become, they become one. So if we go to our plugins here, we can see we have WP GraphQL Yoast SEO, uh, WP GraphQL ACF, Yoast SEO. Um, if we go back to the post, we go down to our Yoast data down at the bottom here, we can see we have made a description of my cute puppy page. Maybe we'll, we want to update that. I don't know, maybe just, you know. Oh yeah, exclamation, exclamation marks. Yeah, <laughs> just shout it out to the world. Uh, update that. If we go... I hear four exclamation marks really boosts your SEO. <laughs> I'm sure it does. <laughs> so in, in this is WordPress graphical. Um, we can see we have that data here. My cute puppy page. Over so that's... Gatsby. That was you using WP GraphQL to execute a query directly to WordPress. Yep. You're asking for a post, but the idea of the post that you just edited, and you're asking for the SEO data, which you just edited. Exactly. So since we updated that post, we're going to have that data in Gatsby as well. So here's our old meta description. And if we run that query again, we get our, you know, get our shouting meta description. So now, so now the the content that you publish in WordPress is now part of the Gatsby GraphQL schema. Yep. So you can pull this in along with any other data that's sourced in the Gatsby. So mm -hmm. you can use this with WordPress, Drupal, Contemple. You can all pull this in through the content mesh and build unified websites. Uh, this is pretty special stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, th this is amazing. Um, so let's look at some of the other details of uh, developing like what development experience oh, sure. enhancements you get for sure so to start off like we mentioned in the demo gatsby image uh it works in html gatsby link is also set up automatically um something new that you get that you don't get in vanilla wordpress is like if somebody uploads a, a image to a post and then deletes it from the media library wordpress doesn't really know that that's image is now 404 so that when someone visits the page they'll see a broken image. 
But since we have the build step, we can actually check that in Gatsby and warn about it and give you a link to, to you know, to the back end to fix it, which is pretty great. Um, we also have a new feature which allows you to limit the number of nodes that are fetched during development. So let's say you have a 10,000 page site. Uh, starting Gatsby develop might take 10 or 20 minutes. Um, now you can set that to 50 in development and you know get started developing in 20 seconds instead of 20 minutes. Um, and to go along with that, only images that are actually referenced in like an ACF field or an HTML field or something like that are actually fetched during the build process. So you're not going to fetch 10,000 images just to pull 50 posts. Nice. Yeah. And then one cool thing that you demonstrated was like, uh, any WP GraphQL extension, such as Yoast SEO extension, becomes a Gatsby extension. Uh, so there's extensions like WP GraphQL for Polylang or WP GraphQL for Gutenberg. You activate those on WordPress, and you automatically are able to use that data in Gatsby. That's pretty special. Um, so the way this the way this all works, you have two WordPress plugins on uh, that you need to install on your WordPress site. WP GraphQL. Uh, when you activate that, it turns your WordPress site into a GraphQL server. And WP Gatsby extends that GraphQL schema from WP GraphQL and also stores an activity log. Uh, so as data changes in WordPress, it can notify Gatsby of the changes and keep Gatsby fresh. Uh, and then on the Gatsby side, Gatsby source WordPress experimental is now the official way to go if you're going to use WordPress with Gatsby. This will replace Gatsby source WordPress version three or before Gatsby source GraphQL. Gatsby source Wordsby or any other way you're using WordPress with Gatsby today. This is the way, the artificial recommendation. Uh, in the future, this will become Gatsby source WordPress and will replace V3. Uh, for now, it's going to be Gatsby source WordPress experimental, so you can have them side by side as you migrate. We also have some starters and themes uh, from the community. We have Gatsby starter WordPress 2020, which was the theme we used for our demo for incremental builds and preview. That's from community member Henrik. Using Gatsby Source WordPress Experimental is a repo Tyler maintains to show how to get started with the stack. And GatsbyWPThemes.com is an upcoming project from Zach Gordon and friends. You can sign up for their newsletter to learn more on their website. We also look forward to seeing what you submit to this community. Visit us on GitHub to learn more about how to use the beta and find documentation there. We appreciate you being here. Thanks everybody.